What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to Down to the Wire. I'm your host, Brian Costa. And today, guys, I have yet another amazing athlete interview for you guys. As you know, if you've listened to this show before, I love to talk with all types of athletes. And today we are once again diving into the world of college football. However, unlike past interviews where we've spoken with current college athletes, we are instead getting the chance to talk with someone who is currently at the start of their journey of playing at the next level. Joining me on the show today is a linebacker who, who starting next fall will be calling Bryant University as home. So without any further ado, hailing from LaSalle Academy in Providence, Rhode Island, please welcome to the show, Mr. Jameson Jarvis. Jameson, man, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Jameson, I'm so glad to have you on the show, man. I, I'm per, honestly, I have so many words to say. I am really glad to get you on because one, I've, as someone who's interviewed athletes before, again, I've interviewed people at the collegiate level, but then someone like yourself who is going to get the chance to, you know, start this journey next fall. I, I'm, I really want your perspective on it because I, I think a lot of people, you know, in those first couple of months, they learn a lot. So, I want to get inside the mind of someone who is, you know, just about to kind of just walk into the fire and kind of get into that whole mind space. So uh, another thing I'm happy about too, is we are back in the Koffler center for, for everyone who watches here at down to the wire. We haven't been in here for a little bit, but we're back in the Koffler center back on live radio and it feels so good, but Jameson, man, first things first that I want to ask you is obviously you've been playing football for a very long time. You're, you're playing, you're going to be playing football at the D one level. I mean, you've had tremendous success on the field, but just, I want to take it back for a second. How did this all kind of start for you? When did it all begin for you? Like, how did you kind of start on this journey of playing uh, football? Yeah. So uh, my dad played football and the like first experience I had playing football was, I remember I was six and I went to a flag yeah. football practice, <laughs> my dad and my mom and my twin brother actually. And uh, I remember we showed up for the, our first practice. And my mom made us get like all padded gear <laughs> and it was just flag. I oh, showed yeah. up there. Everyone was in shirts and a t <laughs> shorts and a t-shirt. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> so, but yeah, that was basically the, the first, the start of it. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, I was, I, I was very similar with baseball. I got started at a very young age. My dad played when he was younger. So for me, it was, it was just like, all right, you know, this is, this is going to be your path. This is what you're going to do. And I remember like, unlike you where you're, you were able to go on and play at the d1 level when i was younger in baseball i sucked i was terrible man when it came to baseball i ended up quitting when i was younger i had to come back later and eventually kind of proved myself to be a decent athlete down the line but uh for you man i mean you said your dad played football how you know how far how long did he play football kind of just high, high school into college what so, was his deal yeah he uh he played high school and then he actually did a prep year okay and then he played um central connecticut State. oh for real okay so, yeah which so, we so, actually play against. Yeah. So NEC guys. All right. That's actually really cool to see. Yeah. I mean, hell, I don't even know if the NEC was around back then, but <laughs> I probably was. And I'm going to look like the, I'm going to look like the a-hole here, but who cares? Uh, but anyways, uh, so obviously, you know, you're playing at this level now when you got started up, I mean, you went in full pads, you're doing that whole thing. I mean, were you kind of, were you kind of a late bloomer to where you kind of came onto the scene a little bit later, or were you kind of a natural from the start when you, uh, when you got started? So to be honest, my brother was more the natural one. Yeah. He was quarterback and I was a lineman. I okay. Was, yeah. I was a little chubbier when I was younger too. <laughs> and uh, now things have changed, obviously. Uh, yeah, bro. I, I, I will get, in, I will definitely get into that with you. Cause bro, I have, uh, I've been seeing your, your, your social media and stuff. You are a workout uh, guru right now. You've been, Thanks. you've been just been hammering that whole thing. So yeah. uh, obviously that's, that's obviously a ton of fun to get, to get into with you later on. But, you know, you talked about, you know, you talked about the impact that your dad had. You talked about, uh, you know, other people like that uh, outside of your dad. Are there any other coaches and professionals that you would probably attribute to, you know, your success in getting to this next level? Yeah, I, I've definitely had amazing coaches on the way who have, you know, gotten me to the point where I am today and not just in football, but For basketball, sure. too. I yeah. had a basketball coach in middle school who, uh, you know, he really pushed me and show me like what hard work truly was. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason like why I'm here today. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, I, what were some of the lessons that they instilled in you that got, that led you to kind of become this person? Uh, well, for starters, they didn't let me get a big head. <laughs> um, I kind of like, I, when I was younger, I wasn't always like the most gifted athlete, but over the years, I just, I wanted to be first in everything I did. So yeah. if we did a sprint, I would make sure that I was the first one to, to finish. And that just carried over. So 
through the years of middle school, I started to like, you know, kind of get ahead of everyone else. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I would get lazy and instead of, you know, like them letting me do my own thing because I was yeah. become like the star player. No, that didn't, that didn't fly. <laughs> they make me work harder. I, I can, I can definitely say that, man. I, I've only known you for, I mean, like, I mean, I got to check the time for like what, 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've met you in person. I've been exchanging texts with you back and forth, but I can tell from, you know, the amount of time I've talked with you, you, you don't come across as a guy that has a big head. I've, I've talked with athletes and luckily they haven't, none of them have really been on this show, but I've talked with athletes that, you know, have a big head. They're going to walk in nose in the air, just thinking, Oh, I'm better than all these guys. I can go in and just, you know, just be, and just be an ass. Oh, geez. But just kind of be that kind of a guy towards people. And that that's kind of the, uh, that's kind of just the reputation that they go out with. And I don't know, it, it, it kind of, it can be annoying when you, when you deal with some of those guys. So it is very refreshing to, you know, see someone like yourself who is very well collected, well-minded, and just being able to be very professional about going, you know, on to play football at, you know, in college. So, I mean, obviously a lot of stuff goes into that. Uh, you know, when did it, when did it occur to you that you were going to be able to have that chance to play at the next level? Like, was there, I mean, you talked about kind of coming on a little bit later, having to work to, you know, get to that next level. Was there a, was there a moment where, where it clicked for you? I mean, I've talked with athletes on this show. One guy in particular is uh, he got drafted by the white Sox very recently. His name's Sean Burke. Uh, he got, you know, drafted out of Maryland. Uh, I, I said the same question to him and he had said, well, I was nine years old and I hit a home run out of a, I hit a home run out of a little league field by like 50 feet. And, and my dad looked at me and said, all right, this kid's got a shot. <laughs> what, like for you, for you, when did you realize, all right, Hey, I, I'm, I'm pretty decent at this whole football thing. I might have a shot to, you know, extend this career a little beyond high school. Yeah. So uh, my main sport was actually baseball growing uh, up. Dude, I love that. Yeah, <laughs> I, played, I played travel ball and I was, I was, uh, I was pretty good. Yeah. Um, what, posi what position do you play? Center field. Oh, dude got my heart <laughs> yeah I, I was a center fielder back in the day well you know whenever i was allowed to play center field i mean because i had freaking speed for it i could go out there and just do that whole thing but uh yeah so obviously then going back into the football side of things yeah um so i well i loved football football was always like had my heart yeah um, i mean whatever season i was in i kind of fell in love with it. and then mm -hmm. by the end of the season i was like all right let's get to the next you know it it was carrying on. Yeah. But um, when I was in seventh grade, uh, I kind of, I, I kind of like spurted. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I played at like a much higher level than the kids around me. And then eighth grade, I knew like I had the opportunity to, you know, be something pretty good. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I didn't stay in my uh, public school. Yeah. I wanted a better education and, you know, play at a higher level. Absolutely. So I went to LaSalle. And, uh, I, they just really, I've grown from there. Yeah. So, yeah. What were some of the, what were some, what are some of the key takeaways you've been able to take away from your time at LaSalle that have helped you become this player and, and, per, and person in general? Well, the talent level is very different. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, being a, being a freshman at LaSalle, like walking in and just not knowing anybody and all the seniors, these kids are grown, you know, um, they're playing college football too the ne next year. So. I was like, all right, I actually got, I got to step it up now. You yeah. know, I, people told me right now, like when I was in middle school, you're in North Smithfield, it's a small town. Yeah. You're, you're a big fish in a small pond. You're going to go mm -hmm. to LaSalle. You're going to be a small fish in a big pond. You're not going to like that. You're going to yeah. come back. You know, you might be good here, but when you get there, you're going to be average. You mm -hmm. might not play till your junior, maybe even senior year. Wow. Yeah. So, so there were a lot of people kind of doubting you early on. Absolutely. That. Yeah. yeah what did you, I mean, obviously being able to go into to LaSalle and do that, obviously how, do, how were you able to prove those doubters wrong? Uh, I just, I have a motor that never <laughs> stops. That's, that's, uh, that was always in the back of my mind. And I just, you know, every morning I get up at 4:45, I work out at five 30 and I, yeah. I just, that's in the back of my head. Now I'm going to play division one football. It's the whole thing's going to come again so yeah I really no, get a absolutely i mean you were talking about walking into LaSalle and seeing like just these big like seniors that you know were just about to go off and start their collegiate careers for you having that experience of going in and seeing guys that are ready to play at the next level do you think that's going to probably give you maybe not an edge but at least give you some insight into what you're going to walk into next fall with bryant yeah i mean yeah because i i made friends with them and you yeah know, we stayed in touch um one of my friends plays a sacred heart. So okay. it's, yeah, I definitely like, 
they kind of let me in a little bit. And yeah. So I have an idea. Oh, absolutely. I think, I, I think for being able to play at a talent level like that, I mean, I came from a very small school, kind of similar to North Smithfield. I am from Sutton, Massachusetts. So my graduating class had like a little over a hundred kids, our football team. I mean, God bless the kids on that football team, but I, I basically disowned our, our town's football team. And I, ro I rooted for the local tech school because I just couldn't bear to look at our football team. So I can, I can definitely say like LaSalle and all those local bigs and all those big schools in Rhode Island. I mean, the competition level is incredible. I've talked with, uh, you know, you know, one of the, uh, one of my professors here is actually a local news anchor for WPRI, Mike Monacavo. And I've spoken with him about just about, you know, like you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it, but just the amount of just the way uh, football in Rhode Island is covered, it's it's incredible. Just like the amount of talent that you can come across in this state. I mean, obviously, you're not going down south and seeing guys with like whole like training centers and stadiums. But yeah. I mean, you get pretty good competition up here, I'd have to say. Yeah, I agree. I, Rhode Island slept on. I understand we're a small state, but yeah. we've had some some guys come out of Rhode Island and. Oh, hundred percent. Play at a high level, so yeah. I mean, and again, coming from a school like yours, there's a there's a ton of opportunities, a ton of you know big chances that are that are going to come about from from that. So, obviously, uh, being able to play at the D one level, it's going to take a ton of commitment. Absolutely, it, it, it's going to take a ton of commitment for you already. I mean, what is what is what is your commitment been to been to you know with training and everything involved with that? I know for one, I've uh, you know ever since I you know got in contact with you, I've been following you on your social media. You're very adamant about talking about your training regimen. You're always telling you're asking people, hey, I'll like hit me up if you want any training advice, yeah. if you want anything like that. And man, you, you were, you're really in the gym and you're in there grinding. For you, when did that kind of a commitment start? And you know how has that kind of changed your whole mindset with football? So that started. Um, I went to the movies with my dad and my grandfather and my brother. Okay. And we watched Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> and then from what, there, what, what was, movie theater was showing Rocky around here? Was it like a? It was just like a like holiday like oh, okay. rerun. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. I was, I was about to say like you just step out like a time machine or something. No, I was like, no, I was like no. bro, what's going on here? It's just they had like a rerun going. I and, feel that. Um, of course, my my dad's a big Rocky guy. He, yeah, uh, yeah, he just got TikTok and they'll send me like Rocky speeches <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> I uh, love that. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that was like that kind of fired me up, and I went home and I would do like push ups. <laughs> I have hard boiled eggs. I do sit ups. How old were you when you saw this? Uh young, young. Like yeah? I said, I was. People won't say that I was chubby, but I I was chubby when I was younger. Like, okay. We'd play re, uh, tag at recess, mm -hmm. and I'd be the first one to get tagged. And, <laughs> I was like, this, this isn't happening. This has so, got to stop. Yeah. So uh, I just, I, I was come like fifth grade. I was done. I was like, I'm, I'm going into abs. I mean, I'm going into sixth grade with abs and that's, that's what I did. <laughs> that, that was your commitment. Yeah, it was so, like, it was like, I'm done with all this. I'm going for it. Yeah. F fifth grade um, playing on the travel baseball team. We would go to a place and we'd work out and I kind of, I would just push myself and like, I love the feeling of like, you know, like really working hard. And just after that, you feel accomplished. Yeah. And so that stuck with me. And I continued that throughout the years until now. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. So you've talked about, uh, you know, being involved with some local gyms in the area and being involved with that. Uh, how is that, how has that, you know, helped shape, uh, you know, your, your regimen and getting into all of that? Yeah. So I've had some amazing trainers. Um, I train in Cumberland at Tate Doyle Strength and Conditioning. Okay. And, uh, they're, there's just the guys in there are awesome it's an awesome vibe you know they'll, they really pushed me to my limits that kind of took me to a whole another level of hard work yeah absolutely i mean there's a ton of there's a ton of training that's that goes into place when obviously trying to get to this level and then just knowing what the regimen that these guys go through here i mean i i mean i'll talk to guys on the tennis team on the swift on the swim team not the swift team i mean like <laughs> 40 40 and slip there but on the swim team and they're always like oh i can't talk can't talk right now gotta go do lift gotta go do this and it's it's a it's a lot of dedication because not only are you doing that you also have to do your your study hours you have to do a lot of stuff like that how do you think you're going to be able to handle that, that regimen coming in? Cause you already have a huge workload on your plate. Do you think that, you know, that, do you think that is going to possibly give you some help coming in? Or do you think that there's still obviously going to be kind of a learning curve? So, I mean, I've always had like a, a really good time management. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I'll be okay compared to the other incoming kids. I think I'll have a little advantage on that. Yeah. But, um, the, the all the training I do it's it's at different places it's at La Salle it's at the place in Cumberland it's all over so kind of just training here being on campus here everything around here will kind of uh, I'll be able to do fly through things quicker and then um yeah 
with the schoolwork. And I know that they have um, people that will help me here. And like, so I think I'll, I think I'll be good. Yeah. Something else that I'm wondering about how you're going to be able to adapt to once you come here is something I was reading up on in the Providence Journal. There was a quick little bio about you and it was talking about your size. And it was saying that, and it was, it was saying that, uh, and it says, quote, Jarvis, Jarvis didn't have the size of his fellow all-state linebackers, but played as big as anyone. His superior, his superior st- speed made a difference, whether it be chasing down a running back or looking for a sack. He showed some terrific ball skills as well as picking off three passes and running one back for a pick six. So obviously, they they came out and they said they said that your size could be a question how have you how have you kind of responded to that i mean because i mean bro i'm not i'm not gonna lie i'm looking at you i'm, I'm just like i'm like small like like this this is small like i mean like i mean bro i'm, I'm not saying you're I'm, i mean like yeah you're not a willie mcginnis but i don't <laughs> think like i don't think like you're rudy out there like come on like i was like it's like what is going on out here yeah, and i i've my size is i'm i'm on the, the smaller size smaller side really? for height wise okay um what, what are you standing at right Right about. five nine really just about yeah you seem a little taller than me I'm, I'm i'm coming in around five nine yeah well i mean that was like kind of the big thing too like i knew i would play college football but the size was what was holding me back from you know definitely playing at the division one level yeah and my coach kind of told me that and i knew that my going into my senior season like i would i would have to to really ball out yeah how did you how did you overcome that but you know obviously you did ball out you had, a, you had yourself a terrific season I mean, was that, was that just like a chip on your shoulder that you cared, that you carried with you the whole time? Yeah, it was definitely like, I, I'm, yeah, I'm on the shorter side, but my, uh, my mass yeah. <laughs> makes up for it. You're, I think. you're still going to put up, you're still going to put a hurt on someone and you come down when it yeah, comes down to it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one of the things I've noticed uh, just very, very recently is, you know, during the course of this interview, you're very mild mannered. You're very, uh, you you know, you, but however, you're very still passionate about the game of football. I've, you know, the guy that's actually kind of reminds me of is a guy who spoke at the school here very recently, and it was Matthew Slater. Uh, he, he came to the school very recently, and I don't know if you've ever listened to him speak, but, you know, whenever he talks, he's very relaxed, very, you know, kind of casual, but then you see him on the football field, and the man's a killer. I mean, yeah. the, the guy goes out there, and he, and he just absolutely lights guys up. I mean, I asked him this question, and because he had, a, it was in a Q&A panel, and I want to ask you how do you go from being this guy kind of just being able to be chill out in the booth to wanting to take a guy's head off on the field? How do you flip that switch? Uh, It's easy. Yeah, definitely easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I get in the locker room. I put my, my headset on and nobody talks to me. I just (laughs) music blasting. My head's bumping. I'm just staring and I walk out on the field. We run out and it's just, it's, it's easy. It's easy. Yeah. I, I, I was very similar on the bus rides to games. I mean, it's, for football, I feel like it, it's it's got to be so rewarding to like kind of get like get like kind of jacked up like that and then just go immediately hit someone. For me, like in baseball, it was like, all right, yeah, I'm 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 really pumped, really pumped. I'm now I'm gonna go stand in the outfield, and it's like, what the hell am I doing? And then the only the only time where I could ever really feel that kind of uh, adrenaline rush was in track because then you'd show up like you do your runs, but then you're still like waiting for stuff to come up. With football, like you're getting on the field and you're putting a hurt on someone very very quickly. So I think that's that that's definitely got to be that definitely helps with getting into that mindset. Uh, what I gotta, what I gotta wonder after that though, is, you know, you're talking about your size, you're talking about other schools looking at you and whether you, whether you were unsure as to whether you're going to play the D one level, did you get any other offers outside of Bryant or what was your, what, what was your deal? Were you looking at other schools outside of Rhode Island or so Bryant was my number one choice, Yeah, you know, by far. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I definitely, I got a lot of looks, a lot of local schools, a ton of division twos. Yeah. Um, and they gave me really good deals, but. Brian was just, I narrowed it down to kind of, I'm not going to say, cause I don't want. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, you don't, you don't need like to. Who I was deciding between. Yeah. You, you don't need to air that out. If you, it, the it, rivals here, I should just say. Oh, okay. I so, see. I see how it goes. So there were some schools. Okay. Yeah. But uh, Brian by far was number one. What, what made Brian, obviously, you know, D1 pro, football program. It was something that you were looking for. What made it the program that you said, yeah, this is where I want to be. Obviously local, local is nice for me. That was how, that that's how I chose to come here. I didn't come here for athletics, but uh, I obviously I love the programs here. If Bryant was two hours away, I still would have considered to go here, but I mean, man, just being 25 minutes down the road for me, that's, that, that's, it doesn't get any better than that. If I, if I ever need that close connection, I can go home. But for you, man, what were some things that, you know, made, made the school really stand out for you? So, I mean, I, I've, I've, I came here when I was younger, yeah. obviously, and I'd come to the, the football camps. I Absolutely. even did a baseball camp. 
Um, I did a baseball camp too. I wonder if we actually ran. A, I wonder if we actually came across probably, each other. Probably. probably at some point. Yeah, I did, I remember I did them. I did one back in like 2018, and then I did one back. I think like 2016 or something like that. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we came across each probably. other. Yeah, that's actually funny. But yeah, go on. Um, was the camp on the softball field? Uh, it was on the base. It, we, it was on the it was on the big diamond. Uh, I I played on a softball field. And oh, really? It was I was in little league. We had a home run derby. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just remember it. <laughs> I finished at the top. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, dude. Um, all right, what were we talking about? No, again? Uh, about about you know kind of why you why you oh, decided I, to so, come here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I came here. Um, it was a night game against Sacred Heart mm-hmm. and football, right? Yeah, football. Okay. And the atmosphere was wild. Um, just. That kind of that night, I said, "Dad, I want to go here." Mom, like, I'm, I'm, I'm staying local. This is, and I, t- I told my coach that like Bryant is where I want to go, and he kind of put a full court press on, like, talk to the coaches and everything. Yeah, and it ended up working out. But the facilities obviously are they're incredible. Yeah. Um, really, the just what the school has to offer. You yeah, know, with the business, and that's what I want to do. Business. And uh, it was definitely, it'll, it'll put me in the right direction for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you talked about the facilities that I can definitely, I can definitely say that's uh that's a huge draw. I know for people here, I know for kids on the baseball team that have come here, they've referred to the, at least in their mind, they refer to the facilities here as the Ritz Carlton of Northeast baseball. That's how they, that's how they like to call it. Cause <laughs> I mean, of just the amazing program that they got up here. Obviously, Bryant football is making a rise with some of the some of the stuff they go they got going on here. And then, you know, obviously coming to the school here too. You were saying that you were saying to me earlier, you want to get into entrepreneurship here. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's awesome. So, I mean, what are some things that you want to do with entrepreneurship? Uh, you know, obviously, again, you're a senior in high school. You got so much time on your hands. I mean, I wish I could be in your position and like, I mean. And just and just be like, oh, just going to college, going to do my thing for a couple of years, and then figure some stuff out. But uh, you know, if you had to look ahead, no stress, and just if, if you had if you had your druthers about what you wanted to do, what would it be? Yeah, so, um, I actually I have a couple ideas. Uh, I want definitely want to do something in like the fitness industry. Um, yeah, like you know, me and training. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I would like to open up a, a gym one day. Okay. You know, um, kind of like started off as like a private gym. And, uh, you know, have people be trained and everything. And then, you know, just expand. Once that gym does good, you know, maybe build another one. And okay. then once the, they do good, you know, and then build another. Year, build another one and just keep going and maybe like one day kind of have a franchise type of thing. That's actually, that's actually really interesting. I knew a kid here. His name was, uh, his name was Thomas. He, he, he graduated actually just last semester. He's actually looking to do something very similar. So really? yeah, it's uh, he, he's, he's, yeah, Thomas Marini. And he's a, he just graduated last year. He's looking into something very similar. So that's actually, that's actually interesting that you do bring that up. Yeah. Uh, he, he was a good friend of mine when I knew him here. So I'll, maybe I'll have to, I might have to get you in touch with a kid like that. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah. But nah, it's uh it, it's pretty good. Like the, what you're able to have here. I love, I mean, I'm a communications major. I'm a, you know, obviously, which is liberal art here, not the traditional business path, which you see from students here. But man, I, I love the fact that you are, you know, put in the put in a position to thrive in business just because of the way it's changing and evolving right now. I love what it has to offer here. So that is something I really do like. Uh, you know, you were talking about, uh, you, you know, you were talking about kind of getting a chance to come here, do your thing. Uh, one, of, one of the things I'm wondering about too, uh, before I, I, I one of the things, uh, I actually didn't mean to ask you this. My, my apologies, but uh, you were talking about you know getting involved with training, doing some stuff here. I got three letters for you, and they stand and they stand for three words: N I L, name, image, likeness. Would there be any chance that you'd want to get involved with like some local gyms here and try to do some you know promotionary things? Now I I know it's difficult on the Northeast. I I'm not gonna lie. It's I mean it, it unfortunately we're not in an Alabama. We're not in an Auburn. We're, we're, we're it's just like it's like. Hey, I want that guy. Like, let me get him. But if an opportunity presented itself, would you be down to possibly like represent something around here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to stay local is you know build my reputation up. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, hundred percent, man. I think that uh, it's still something that is in the works with coming here. I think that a lot of athletes are getting into it, but 
I mean, Brian athletics is seeing a much bigger, uh, like we're seeing a much bigger draw. We're not just the baseball school anymore. Our basketball program is picking up. Uh, we currently have the number one leading score in the country and Peter kiss. He's at, he's leading the nation in points per game. So we're making, we're making our name. We're making our mark in more areas than just the traditional ones that you see on, on like in the, in the newspaper. So we're obviously making moves there. Uh, what I was going to ask you about though, is, you know, we were talking about the Brian football team and how you're going to, how you're going to try to have to adjust uh, to them. I've met a lot of guys in the Bryant football team, whether it be Zevi Ekos, the quarterback, Fabrice Mukendi, the running back, and even some guys on the defensive end, like Ronell Joseph, who's a DB, and uh, Darnell Schillingford, who's on the line. He'll he'll probably be a guy that you'll get to know next year because, man, I, I love Darnell. He's been, I've known him since freshman year. He's a great guy. You're going to probably love to get, love the chance to get to talk with him. How are you going to try to get, how are you going to try to inundate yourself with those guys and really become, you know, how are you going to try to like really set the set the stage with those guys fresh like walking in the door um i i know that like the community here is really close and it's a, a brotherhood um you know just my my hard work and like the the positivity i'm going to bring to them i i, I think they'll you know mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be a, they'll welcome me in yeah. yeah absolutely how do you feel about the program in general I mean, like, just like just coming into it, obviously, obviously you picked it, you have great thoughts about it, but just in general, what are your thoughts about, you know, like being able to compete in this, being able to compete in this conference, you were already competing at a very competitive one in Rhode Island. Now staying in the new England region, how do you feel about, you know, the competition you're going to be facing? The competition is going to be better. It's division one college football. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, let's get that out yeah. of the way. It's going to be better competition. Yeah. And I, I, from what I've heard from a lot of guys is that, you know, you can have all this preparedness in college. And I've talked with, I, I think it was Darnell who may have said this to me, but he said, he said, high school, you, you know, this much. And then college football, you, you learn the game in a completely new way. And it's completely, it, it just baffles your mind the way, the way coaches will explain things to you. And it's, and the game is explained in a way that you never could have thought before. And then you go on to the next level and it's, and it's exactly like that again. So there's obviously going to be that kind of a curve, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think you're really going to enjoy the coaches that you're going to get a chance to work with here, whether it be coach Merritt, Barisi Daniels on the, on the defensive side. So like, there's going to be a lot of great opportunities for you here. I think that, you know, this school is, and a, it's a great opportunity and i think that you're gonna have a lot of fun here man absolutely yeah, yeah. i like you said I, I love to learn so uh, whatever they, they preach to me i'm gonna take in and, and run with it yeah absolutely so uh before we do go i kind of i, I kind of do want to ask if there is one message for the bryant university football program and all the people here what is what do you want them to know about you as a player coming in just that i'm gonna give them my all you know every chance i get and uh Hopefully I bring a, a positive impact to the program. Yeah, absolutely, man. Hey, I, I'm, I'm really appreciative that we were, we were able to have you on the show, man. But unfortunately, we are now down to the wire, which means that we're going to wrap up everything we talked about in this interview and send you guys on your way into this beautiful, beautiful weekend. I mean, man, the weather's been amazing. Right? Yes, it has. I mean, it, it's kind of been like a little off and on. I mean, it's been like, you know, snow on a foot like one day and then it's, uh, yeah, and then it's, it's 60 the next. I mean, man, I come in here in jeans in this studio and I'm like sweating. Like I'm, I'm sweating. Like I can't even say what I'm sweating like, but <laughs> man, let's just say I'm sweating because uh, man, like this weather's just been unreal. But uh, obviously, we started things off today by talking with Mr. Jamison Jarvis uh, of LaSalle Academy Football. He's going to be a freshman here at Bright University next fall. We're so excited to have him on this football team and have him with a great group, great group of guys next year. It's going to be a fun time seeing you on the football field. Hopefully, we get to see a whole lot of you. During this interview, we talked about we talked to Jamison about his about his origins and how he got started with football. We talked about some of the challenges that he's faced over the course of his career and what he is going to bring to the Bright University football program going forward jameson man thank you so much for coming on it has been a blast having you on the thank show it, i really was i'm really glad i was able to get you on the show uh it was i it, it was funny how we were able to do this too I, I wanted to explain this at the top of the show but uh the way i found you was uh my my brother plays uh my brother plays college prospect baseball or did before he recently committed to go play at assumption but uh one of his teammates on on, on the team was uh clyde Boudier, who is actually a uh he, he's a fellow classmate of yours at LaSalle. Yep. so uh, i saw him post a you know put out a post for you saying that you were going to be going to bryant and i was like hey bryant guy I got to get on that. Cause I mean, that that's my thing. I got to get on people and I got to, you know, get these interviews going. So as soon as that happened, I was, I hit him up, said, Hey, can I get in contact with this guy? He gave me your, your info. And I'm glad I was able to get you on for this, man. It's been a blast having you on. Uh, but listen, if you guys are not following down to the wire at this point, what are you guys doing? We are available everywhere. You guys can find podcasts, whether that be on Spotify, 
Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, you obviously see you're watching it there. But the main hub you can follow us on is our Instagram. You can follow that at down.tothewire on Instagram. Again, at down.tothewire on Instagram. Uh, again, we've been doing this on live on ra- live radio for the first time in a little bit. So uh, for, the, for those here on live, you've been listening to WJMF 88.7 HD2, Smithfield, Providence. Thank you guys so much for watching this again. Have a great weekend. And from Down the Wire, I'm Brian Costa. I'm Jameson Jarvis. And take care. Peace out.